coming up on the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City after show. Me and her husband pitched in too. Was that me? Because you don't have one. So what does that her husband got to do with anything? Oh, that's messed up. Like, Mary, you can't say that. She knows very well that she's the only one in the group that doesn't have a husband. And I'm like, well, you're your step granddaddy, so I'm not quite sure how that all works out. You are not just degrading me, you're degrading every single woman and single mother out there, and that I won't stand for. Drop it. You're I raising love kids Taco on Taco Bell. Bell. <laughs> Who does that? Why are you still at Taco Bell? At what point are you gonna focus? and get yourself in the kitchen and cook and nourish your husband and act like a mom. I didn't know Mary was so offended by my diet. And I did have four Kit Kats with a glass of milk for breakfast this morning, busted. I have a question, Meredith, because you exude leading with love and kindness. Thank you. But she does not. That's a dysfunctional friendship. I have zero answers, I don't get it. Meredith hasn't pissed Mary off yet. Meredith is smart in watching all of us get beat up by Mary, that she's smart to keep the peace. I think I was very um, level-headed and tame. I loved it. I've never seen Meredith cut loose like that. There is a lot of Hufflepuffery that went on that night. <laughs> what the f is Hufflepuffery? Meredith definitely engaged. <laughs> Your Real Housewives of Salt Lake City after show starts now. Heather, you and Mary get into a little disagreement at the Cinco de Mayo party. You know, her husband pitched in for the trip, too. Me and her husband pitched in, too. Was that me? Pay for the trip. Yeah, Because you don't have one. So what does that her husband got to do with anything? Oh. Well, Mary has lobbied that at me a lot. You know, she says, you look like a man. That's why you don't have a man. And you don't have a husband. Why are you even here? This is a housewife show. And you are you can't be a wife without a man. And I'm like, well, you your step granddaddy. F you, Mary Cosby. Who's your husband? It's your step granddaddy. So I'm not quite sure how that all works out, but she feels fine lobbying those horrible slurs at me. But what really set me off was when she went after Jenny. Well, I think you're very rude to me because well, I, I talked to you. I don't really care because I'm, I'm. Oh, you don't care that you're I rude to me. I didn't ask your opinion. I don't care. No, no, me. opinion or not, it is a fact. You are rude to me. And I was sitting next to Jenny, and Jenny, as tough as she is, I just couldn't call myself a friend to her and watch Mary lob those horrible slurs at her. And so when Mary took her all of the you know horrible things she was saying to Jenny, and then she turned it on me and said. You don't even have a husband, why are you here? I hit my limit of tolerance with Mary for as crazy as she is and as much as I try to give her some latitude, I just was over it and I just was like, screw you and I have no interest in listening to your abuse any longer. I don't remember saying that, but I remember Heather saying something about Jenny deserves to be here. You know, her husband uh, paid for it. And I was like, oh, so you don't have one? So that means you don't deserve to be here? I'm always trying to like enlighten Heather of her worth, but she comes from another place. That's the only thing I could think of reason why I said that. But she probably annoyed me so bad, I probably didn't even get that out. Cause I mean, I, why would I say that for no reason? That Who says that? Yeah, it had to be provoked from somewhere. That's messed up. Like Mary, you can't say that. Heather is sensitive of the fact that she's gone through a divorce. And she knows very well that she's the only one in the group that doesn't have a husband. Why would you say that, Mary? Because well, I want to. Do you think I'm under the impression that I have a husband? You can say that to Heather, but Mary, your husband's never around either. So like, what? why are you saying that to Heather? Like, that's just, if anybody said that to Mary, she would be upset about it. So it was just, it was just a mean thing to say. I am here. And like the fact that I'm here without a husband is credit to me. The fact that I show up at all of these events alone it's credit to me. The fact that I fight all of these battles without going home to someone that wants to listen to me, support me, pay my goddamn bills, that is a credit to me. And if you want to weaponize that and use it against me, you are not just degrading me. I'm in a privileged, powerful position. You're degrading every single woman and single mother out there that is doing everything they can for their kids. And that I won't stand for. Throw it at me all you want, but I am going to take a stand for every woman in my same position. And it's unfair and it's uncool and I won't accept it. Yes, Heather. Drop it. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it, honestly. I have the chills. Like, that got me.
After Mary's remark at the Cinco de Mayo party, you clap back. Me and her husband pitched into it. Was that me? Pay for the trip. Because you don't have one. So what does that her husband got to do with anything? Oh. <laughs> you, Mary Cosby. Who's your husband? It's your step granddaddy. I have taken it from her over and over and over. And when she's been horrible to Whitney, you can go. You're not hearing you me, Mary. Go. Little girl. When she's been horrible to me, you know, I just overlook it as quickly as I can and get back to a place of peace. And at that moment, I just thought, you know, I have, I am here. I am dancing the mariachi. I am eating the bad chicken salad. I am really doing my best to make this a successful girls trip amidst a lot of strife. And you are doing nothing but attacking me. And I don't deserve it, Mary Cosby. And I'm not going to take it any longer. Who's your husband? It's your step granddaddy. Is that what she said? That's mean. But she probably thought what I said was mean too. Because you don't have one. So what does that her husband got to do with anything? Oh. I would have known she was saying that to strike back, to hurt me back. And I would have blushed her off like, and what about it? That doesn't bother me. I don't know. It's my life. It's 23 years ago. We've married 24 years. Like, I, it's like life. I don't know. At least I landed someone. You, you, you're still, you know, we're probably the same age and you're still looking for a husband. So, you know, whatever. That was the only time I've ever stood up to her. And I don't regret it. And I haven't spoken to her since. And I don't plan on it until she apologizes. When you see her again, what would you say? I want to say to her, you need to apologize to me and you need to apologize to your congregation. You need to apologize to everyone that's given you their mortgages, their tithing and their goods for you to hoard and fill up your closet with a lot of meaningless shit. And then you spew out horrible, hateful things to the people that have stood up for you and cared about you and showed up for you. You're always on some kind of wine. Somebody's always driving you home. Bring your head down, babe. You're nobody. And until you do that, we have nothing to say to each other. What, what is Heather's problem? What did I do to Heather? Why don't you take that same energy and put it towards Jen? When Jen calls her these names, I've never called Heather out of her name. I could have been manipulated say, you. What, what do you want me to say? What? The whole world can see that she's being in a horrible friendship with Jen. I mean, she's calling her manatee. She's calling her Shrek. What I was letting go were absolute horrific, horrible, mean, low blow things you said about me behind my back. Tell her one. Okay, um, she thinks she's an actress. The only role she's going to get is that of a manatee or Shrek. I've never said Heather was some type of animal beast. And Heather, she's doing all her yelling on a, their little chubby self. I, would... I don't treat people in a disrespectful way. I think a lot of us wouldn't have... You, you because I don't want to be disrespected. Oh, but I love her. And I love her. You call me Shrek and you're my friend. I'm, I'm not loving you. No, you call me a manatee. That I means like I'm a, I'm a sea mammal. No. And I, I feel like Heather doesn't really understand her worth. She doesn't know that she, she extends a, a beautiful friendship to people and she should get it back. And period. Heather is used to she takes friendship as, as battered and, and, and hurtful and name calling. She takes that as a friendship. I don't. I think that the friendships are, are, they're not double standard. They're not one-sided and they're not name calling. They're not tearing down their friends. And some people are just used to being in a battered relationship and they think it's love. And I think Heather's one of those type of people, but I don't even know what she's talking about. When she can tell me what she did to me, maybe I'll listen to Heather. Other than that, put her on mute. She's not talking about anything because I didn't do anything to Heather. I promise you I did not. Mary, at one point you get into a tiff with Lisa over her diet. Your whole life Let's is fake. Let's not you go to Taco Bell for crying out loud. Oh my What's God. What's wrong with eating a Taco oh Bell? God. You're I raising kids Taco on Taco Bell. Bell. <laughs> does that they all just kept coming at me mary you're fake as f that's what you are you're fake you say you're sorry all the time and then you do the same thing over again it's the cycle of abuse i'm gonna say something back i'm not gonna just sit there and let you attack me and think that it's okay especially when i'm not doing anything to 
to provoke it or, you know. Well, I think you're very rude to me because well, I, I talk ask. to you. I don't really care because I'm, I'm a, Oh, you don't care that you're rude to me? I didn't ask me. your opinion. I don't care. No, no, opinion or not. It is a fact. You are rude to me. That's not kind. Oh, when you talk That's to not me. kind. Mary was again being so inappropriate to Jenny. The night before, she was saying she's now open to a relationship with Jenny and wanting to be her friend. Jen, I want to apologize to you today. For me, I just shut the door on like opening people, new people in my life. And I, I don't mean it personally, it would be anyone. But then at this dinner, she's being fake to her and now she's back to doesn't like her, doesn't want to be your friend, doesn't want to talk to her. What is your problem with me? I don't have me? a problem with you. Yes, you do. I don't want to yes, know you, you. I don't really care. So I'm basically saying, Mary, you've got to stop doing it. I don't want her to feel bad. I don't want her to feel bad. Her, me, you, or Jenny. It's not kind. It's a common narrative with Mary. First she says, oh, I love you. You look so pretty. Then she insults you. Then she says sorry, and then she tells you how pretty you are, and she wants to be your friend. But it's the same conversation over and over again. And so, I'm trying to say, Mary, you've got to stop doing this. And then she says, my business are fake, my kids are fake, I don't even feed my kids. You don't even know how to be real. You wasn't You don't taught. know what's real. Everything about you, you is fake. I mean, you're like, Let's not go you're there. You're still eating candy. Mary, don't worry life. about my diet. Like, don't worry about my diet. I'm not are. interested in what you like, think you're, about you're my diet. A, I do eat candy for breakfast. What are you getting, Kit Kats? For breakfast. It's like busted, I'm guilty. I didn't know Mary was so offended by my diet. When you signed up to be a mom, don't you think it's owed to your kids to give them proper nutrients? So do you think it's owed to your children to, to raise them healthy? Why are you still at Taco Bell? At what point are you going to focus and get yourself in the kitchen and cook and nourish your husband, nourish your children and act like a mom and stop running around here digging people's business up and being a mean person? There's a lot of things you can do other than trying to take tear people down or bring them down, whatever she's doing. You can cook. You know that you know your kids need it. They're they're still growing, so be a mom. Yeah, I love my son. I'm like Mary. Your business is fake. Your life is fake. Your everything's fake, not mine. And I mean, it's Cinco de Mayo. I just want to have margaritas. So I literally go to the bar, grab my tequila, and I'm like, I'm gonna drink my real tequila from my real business. And that's so upsetting to her. Lisa starts saying, talking about my church. My whole congregation don't even like you. I can't even invite you, you even to my church. You don't even have a congregation. They're all leaving because they don't do understand what they're even praying to or who they're praying to. Let's not go there. She starts talking about all the things she's heard, but it's subliminal. She's not really saying what she's heard. She's going around about what she thinks she knows. Something. He mortgaged his house and gave her 300 grand. I got angry because if she wanted to know anything about me, why is she going seeking other people? Why is she finding it, finding out things through other people and their lies? And they're people that clearly hate me too. It's literally like a, an abusive cycle. And she does it with all of us. And I think we're at the point where it's like, enough, Mary. If you don't want to be friends with any of us, don't be our friend, but stop putting us in this vicious cycle. And I did have four Kit Kats with a glass of milk for breakfast this morning. Busted. <laughs> Everybody let loose at Club Zion, especially Meredith. <laughs> I don't know what happened to Meredith but something just completely changed. You met Jen Shaw one for one, mano a mano for the whole night, partying it up. I think I was very um, level-headed and tame. <laughs> Meredith just went into another land that was like, I loved it. I've never seen Meredith cut loose like that. There is a lot of Hufflepuffery that went on that night. <laughs> Wait, what is Hufflepuffery? <laughs> I was obsessed, okay? I mean, first of all, let's start with Whitney served me wine out of a, a cake plate as a goblet. So I had a lot to drink, okay? We should probably pour a bottle of mine and a bottle in hers, and we were like, cheers with these big goblets. And then I don't even know what Heather was talking about, but at some point she says something about a Hufflepuff or a Hufflepuffle, I'm not really even sure anymore. Hufflepuff, because because Jen, Jen came glasses. down to the hot tub with these giant Harry Potter glasses and I said, oh my goodness, she just joined us. And then I started pretending the role of the sorting hat. And I told Meredith that she was at the house of Hufflepuff. 
It's an insult because no one wants to be from Hufflepuff. They want to be from Gryffindor. But she didn't know, so she was like, Hufflepuff. <laughs> yeah. I was so fixated on the word. I don't know. I thought it was the funniest thing I had ever heard. And I guess it's from Harry Potter. I don't know. I've never, you know, got, gotten into the whole Harry Potter thing. To me, it was kind of like fluffy bull****. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like um, just nonsensical BS, you know? And that's why I kept saying there's a lot of Hufflepuffery. But yet, in my view, a Hufflepuff was a cool thing to be. So, so don't ask what my thinking was. To me, the Hufflepuffery was the like negative BF stuff, but being a Hufflepuff was like a cool, cute little thing. Meredith starts talking about, this is Hufflepuffery, ha ha ha, Hufflepuffery. And I'm like, what the f is Hufflepuffery? But whatever, she's happy and laughing. So we, we just like, we're like, let her talk about her Hufflepuffery. It was a shenanigans. I don't know if that's the word she said, but I call it shenanigans. It was, and I think Whitney goes topless in the pool. She's ready to go, she, you know, just take it all off. I think her and Meredith had like a little smooch or something. Woo, there's a lot going on. But that was one night that I, I think Meredith forgot all about Jen and the situation. Who's calling who a fraud? Love you, baby. Ask your 10 other mother boyfriends. Bye. And she definitely engaged and they had a good time. <laughs>After ATVing with Whitney, the two of you start to question your friendship with Meredith and why she said she can't be your friend. I really hope that Meredith is not that f***ed up to do something like this. Is there it's something me. bigger that happened with you two? No, nothing. Here's the problem and here's my experience with Meredith. I think everything's fine. Then guess what? A week or two weeks from now, she'll be like, no. I never said I liked you. I told you I had problems. I was drinking that night. Why do you think Meredith has been cautious to accept your friendship? It, at this point, it's like I've done everything in my power to repair my relationship with Meredith, to show her I care about her and her family. I even sent flowers to the family, apologized to the family again, wrote them a card just because I wanted them to know, like, listen, it wasn't about me necessarily like doing something. For me, it was, hey, if I'm gonna say you're my friend and you feel a certain way, like if you feel your feelings are hurt by something. Did you like a comment referring to my son as a sissy bitch? No! Yes, you did. I'm gonna apologize because I care about the friendship. Forget about if I meant it or didn't, I didn't, but it doesn't matter, that's a moot point. What matters is you, your feelings are hurt or your son's feelings are hurt, so I care about our friendship, so I want to do everything I can to repair it. It really broke my heart because I had no idea that any comments I made, that you had taken them like that. So I just wanted to say I'm sorry for that too. Yeah. When I heard that Meredith had such a negative opinion. Meredith has, you know, definitively said that it's like over between you guys. I'm like, based on what? Because my last communication with you and your son was very positive. So you were full of the whole time, basically, <laughs> because there was no reason for you to be upset about anything or have any issue. And then because you guys see this, you start talking. And Meredith, I expect you out of anybody, if you truly went to law school and didn't fail, that you should know what the actual constitution states, that you should know what the rights are of an American citizen, that you should know the process of innocent until proven guilty. So to have Meredith, what I felt like was like kind of the ringleader of like this whole bash on Jen when this happened. I do not want her in my presence. I don't want her in my store. I don't want her in my home. And I don't want her around my family. I honestly feel like Meredith was in veil and thought, oh, I'm never gonna see Jen again. So I'm just gonna talk a bunch of shit. And then, like I said, it's like, surprise bitch, I'm right here. And then now she's trying to figure out how to backtrack and deal with what she said. So all these little stories and like whatever she made up, all these little things, these, she kept saying, oh, there's one more thing. I'm, there's one more thing. There's one more thing I'm upset about. It's like, well, what's what now? Like, after all of that, you just don't like me. I don't know what it is. What, I woke up and I started breathing this morning. Like, what is it? Because I was very genuine and deliberate about making things right with Meredith and her family. So that was hurtful because it made me feel like they were just full of
and didn't really care. And then Brooks is over there like doing TikTok videos about being guilty. And like, I see you. But I didn't go run and cry to my mommy, but that's okay. <laughs> While at dinner, Meredith and Mary's friendship comes up. I have a question, Meredith, because you exude leading with love and kindness. Thank you. But she does not. So can you help me understand? Because you have a friend of 10 years here. Everybody has a different dynamic. If I think that Mary's doing something wrong, I tell her. You sat here and you heard her say that she doesn't want to be her friend, she doesn't matter. Do I think that's a nice thing to say? No, I don't. Then stand but up. But everybody is entitled to say that they want to be friends with someone or don't. That's okay. I think Mary's relationships are dictated by Mary, honestly. And I think that Meredith hasn't pissed Mary off yet. And like the rest of us aren't as smart as Meredith. Yeah. It would have been so much easier just to keep my mouth shut and just let Mary like abuse me verbally and be the punching bag and not stand up for myself and just be a true bobblehead. She definitely got the bobblehead. The bobblehead's like a big head. You know, you put those bobbleheads in the car and they bob, because your head's so big, it's just bobbling. Like. <laughs> I have too much self-respect and self-love to do that. And I think that Meredith is smart in watching all of us get beat up by Mary, that she's smart to keep the peace. But it also made a lot of sense um, when I saw her Mary opened up to her at tennis about her marriage. If Robert Jr. leaves my house, it'll just be Robert Sr. and I all the time. And I just find that strange. So there has to be some level of safety that Mary fills with Meredith. Yeah, and Mary has bonded with Brooks over the umbrage of horrible social media attacks from Jen, you know? Jen went hard for Mary. You're gonna go with Mary, who f her grandfather? And she went hard for Brooks. Brooks has never seen, he's probably never seen the vagine, but my vagine is like platinum on ice, baby. And so that builds a trauma bond that none of us would question, you know? Honestly, it doesn't make sense to me because they have a really strong bond. I think it's great to have forage really great, strong friendships. I feel like I have that with Jenny. I feel like most of the time I have that with Meredith. But when it comes to Mary, it's like, why do you keep excusing her bad behavior? This is unacceptable. The way she talks to me, Whitney, Jenny, Heather, everybody but Meredith. And it, at this point, it's so confusing to me. It's such a dis... That's a dysfunctional friendship and relationship. I mean, there's so much information on the internet. I, like I said, I haven't deep dived. Whitney told me that she did. The rumors are that Mary and Robert are predators. What? Why can we forgive Mary so easily, but not Jen? It makes no sense to me. And Jen has negative behavior too. It's not giving Jen a pass and I don't understand it. I don't want to pretend I do. I don't want to, I have zero answers. I don't get it. For me is, I look at, you know, she's known Mary for a couple years. She's known Lisa for 10, but she never had Lisa's back. She has Mary's back. Every moment that we talked about Mary, Meredith would jump in and protect Mary. I have stood behind Mary because she has been a good friend to me. All these insinuations are being made that are way more damaging, I would guess, than what the truth is. I think it was very odd, very weird. And she wouldn't allow other people to say certain things, but she would allow Mary to say certain things to us. And you said, I like your beautiful slanted eyes. Did anyone else know that's offensive? I mean, I, I just something know. I wouldn't that say. I don't know if it would be offensive I mean, or not. I'm so I just sorry, I didn't say know that. It. She would never chase after Lisa or Heather or Whitney, but she always chased after Mary, no matter what the circumstances. And to me, it was very weird because logically I was like, what does Mary have against you or know something about you that we don't know that you're afraid to offend Mary or you know make Mary upset? What is she gonna expose that she knows about you? Why are you so afraid of Mary? You're not afraid of anybody. You speak your mind freely with everyone except Mary. And that to me was so weird. Tell me about the Cinco de Mayo party that Jen hosted. We had fun at the Cinco de Mayo party. <laughs> I were 
and Jen were having fun for sure. Yeah, and I I was also kind of like, wait a second, Jen, like. Are you supposed to be spending money on things right now? Are we supposed to be laying low? Yeah, I remember feeling bad that she felt the need to, you know, spend money on us and do anything other than control all of her reserves for herself and her family. She had stated already to the court that she had no assets. I have a little dilemma. Okay. I know that, you know, Jen has stipulated to the federal government that she has zero assets. If she's paying for this dinner tonight, I can't go. The party has to be paid for. It's not for free. Nothing's for free in life. And so that was like a situation where I'm like, uh-oh, am I like, am I doing something wrong here, you know? And it's uncomfortable when you're invited to something by somebody who you've said I'm not your friend to. That's kind of like a weird situation. And when the event is taking place in the house that you are living in for the weekend, you kind of don't have much of a choice. Like, you know, what am I gonna do, sit in the room? Like, that would be a little weird. Had it been outside the house, I don't know if I would have gone. And I was exhausted, kind of still even hung over. <laughs> um, I mean, the night before was a wild one. Dad, we love you, thanks love for the you. trip! now going on like the third or fourth night where I'm operating on one or two hours of sleep and the last thing I really wanted to do was go to the Cinco de Mayo party at that point in time even if it weren't Jen hosting it you know it was like oh gosh I'm tired this is not what I feel like doing